Hi, and welcome to another week of Nexus. I'm glad to have your company. Now, don't forget to watch out for this symbol. It means there's a special focus on English language learning from that story on our website. Now, later in today's show, we visit a desert garden in Alice Springs, take a day trip to the Whit Sundays, and finish the week with music from Christine Arnu. But first, let's go on a road trip. It's one of the world's most famous coastal drives, hugging Victoria's rugged southwest coast. But the Great Ocean Road is also an enduring war memorial, built by returned soldiers and sailors from the First World War as a tribute to those who gave their lives in the conflict. The famous Great Ocean Road, uh, regarded as one of the great coastal drives of the world. The Great Ocean Road hugs the whole southwest coast of Victoria. It's also the largest war memorial in the world. Some 3,000 uh, workmen uh, built the Great Ocean Road over a period of about 13 years and the vast majority were returned soldiers from the First World War and it was one of the work programs that provided not only employment but the soldiers themselves were very proud to be involved in this as a memorial to all the diggers uh, who lost their lives and fought uh, in the First World War. The road was actually carved out of the cliffs using pick and shovel and horse and dray it was a monumental effort. The cliff was so th steep, they had to lower the men down on ropes. It was very, very dangerous work. And unfortunately, a lot of the people who were working here were shell-shocked. And when they had the blasting going on, it really upset them. But yet there was no casualties on the road. Nobody died. Sausage Gully and Shrapnel Gully, they're named after Anzac Cove, which was a Gallipoli in a part of Turkey. Uh, in 1915, the, the, the great big, in the Great War. And when they built the Great Ocean Road, some of the men that were in that campaign worked on that part of the uh, Great Ocean Road. They named it after the two big battlefields that were there. I remember when it was officially opened in 1932, and it was a marvellous thing. When I was 11, there was a, an article come up in, one of, in the Melbourne press the two cars couldn't pass on the road and we had that photograph taken and sent in to say that the road was perfectly safe. Mind you, we picked the only two places where cars could pass. When you see the Great Ocean Road today, a beautiful big wide sealed road to what it was when they built it, it was just a muddy little narrow track, very, very dangerous and people were scared stiff. I remember when it was a very, very rough track post and rail fence along the side, um, quite a lot of uh, rock falls. Well, right behind us here is where the big slip came back in the uh, 70s. All this face of the mountain started to peel off. They drilled holes right through this peeled off bit back into the base mountain and pinned it all with pre-stressed concrete. And all these caps capped up the ends of the uh, pre-stressed stuff blocked the road here for about six months, we couldn't get through and it was all, uh, looked like it was all going to push into the sea but anyway they saved the day by pinning it back onto the big mountain again. So the mountain was literally falling away? Falling away into the sea and it hasn't moved since. So they literally screwed the mountain back together? They screwed the mountain back together again. So I don't think it's ever been done before or since and a lot of people, particularly from Japan, hear about this and they stop and watch this and to see where this big marvel took place. The Great Ocean Road is probably the most spectacular coastal drive in the world. And I think the reason for that is that it's got such a variety of experiences, that great coastal aspect in the, uh, the Apollo Bay lawn area, then the cool temperate rainforest, and of course the roast coastal rock stacks around the 12 Apostles. You don't get that variety in any other road around the world. And, uh, for 250 kilometres, there's just a surprise around every corner. The reality is that it is a wonderful memorial to the soldiers. There's a lot of people who probably don't appreciate the significance and uh, I think the 75th anniversary celebrations will highlight that very important link between the soldiers who built the road and uh, I think some of the younger generation are going to go away with a greater understanding about uh, the significance of this road.
drive, not only as a great coastal drive, but also as a memorial to the soldiers from the First World War. Yeah, this is the most appropriate war memorial because it's the biggest war memorial in the world because it goes for or 250 kilometres all along and no war memorials as big as that. You remember when the bridle track used to go around there and mm. along the top there? That was before the Great Ocean mm. Road was built. <laughs> <laughs> that shows you how old yeah. we are. How lucky we've been to live in such a wonderful spot and that this road, uh, as I say, we say, oh, it's our road, but it belongs to the whole world. Not a local road anymore, it's an international road of great fame. And while they're called the Twelve Apostles, there are fewer than there used to be as the tides and winds take their toll on these natural rock islands. So come and see.